Algebra 1, Common Core, Unit 4, Section 6, Factoring to Solve Equations. So, uh, you know, back in Unit 3 of my video series, we learned about factoring. And the past couple of videos have been all about solving equations. So 4, 6 kind of ties that all together for us here is, you know, factoring was a great tool uh, for simplifying an expression. Well, we could actually use factoring as a method to solve equations. Sometimes we have to use factoring as a method to solve equations. There are sometimes other options like things such as quadratic formula and stuff like that, things we're going to get into into future videos. But, uh, you know, examples like what you see here, these should hopefully look familiar because it hasn't really been too long since we factored. You know, you should be able to look at stuff like these examples I have down here and say, oh, okay, you kind of recognize the type of factoring that's going on there. You know, the, uh, the box example that I have pre-typed out for you here, um, you know, of x to the third minus 15x equals 2x squared. Well, one of the reasons how you know that factoring is involved, you know, what I tell my classes is when you're solving an equation is, you know, you look for parentheses, you look for fractions, you know, once you, you look for like terms, all those things. If you're trying to solve for x, you want to get all the x's together, you know, at least all of them to the same side. Now, once you get all the x's together on the same side, if you can combine them to be like terms, do so. Like, you know, it's a simple example. If we have, you know, 3x minus 5 equals 2x kind of thing. You know, like I, I know I could subtract 3x and subtract 3x, and you know, because I want the x's all to be in the same place. And then I can combine these because these are like terms. But if I have something, you know, like, let's say, uh, x squared minus 5, or let me do x squared plus... 5x equals 4, something like this. Like these x's are on the same side, but these are not like terms. Like you can combine 2x minus 3x because they're both x to the first. You can combine them to be a single x term. I can't add these together to be a single x term because they're not like terms. So a big hint that you're going to have to do factoring, I'm just going to erase all this. It's okay if you wrote it down. The big hint you're going to have to do factoring is if you're solving for x and you cannot solve for x, because there's multiple terms with x that aren't like terms. Like again, you look at this example here, we have an x to the second, an x to the third, and an x to the first. None of these are like terms. So you can't combine them. So you have no choice but to, how, how do I get x alone if there's multiple x's that way I can't get, you know, so you have to do this with factoring. Um, so be, before factoring, once you know that factoring is involved, the first step is set it equal to zero. So again, recognize that you can't get a single x term because they're not like terms. Then, he says what this is saying here, multiple terms with x that are not like terms. That's how you recognize factoring. Then, so the first thing is to set it equal to zero. You know, you get everything to one side. That, you know, that, that's what we do. We always get all the x's to one side. Typically, we like to combine them all to be one term, but sometimes we can't. So if you can't, that's when you know it's factoring. And then you factor the left. So ignore the equal zero for a moment and just factor the left side like we normally do. You know, remember all of our different factoring types that we uh, had here. The first thing we always look for is the GCF. Remember, that is the most important factoring method that you always want to look for to start. And then you look to see, all right, is it, you know, once you, if there's GCF, you take it out. In this case, there was. There was everything has an X. So we take out that X and then we're left with this. Then it was, all right, if it's four terms, then it's probably grouping. If it's three terms, it's, you know, trinomial factoring. And trinomial factoring could be, you know, advanced or basic, AC, stuff like that. Um, if it's two terms, it might be a dots. You know, so this is really kind of how we thought about factoring. In this case, these three terms, this was a trinomial factoring. And if you remember trinomial factoring, it's, all right, what adds to that, multiplies to that, you know, multiplies to negative 15 is negative 5, positive 3. They also add to negative 2. So that's how we factor. And, you know, again, it's been a couple of weeks maybe since we factored, but you got to, you know, keep this stuff, you know, in the front of your head because we use factoring a lot this year and years to come. So then after you factor, what you do is you set each factor equal to zero. So notice like what you have here, you end up with three factors a GCF factor, an X minus five factor, an X plus three factor, each of those one at a time gets set equal to zero and solved in their own little equation. And you end up with X equals zero, X equals five, X equals negative three, to end up with multiple answers. And one helpful hint is a lot of times we see what your highest exponent, our highest exponent here was three. So it should not be a surprise to get three solutions. 
you know, that's something to look out for. All right, so, excuse me, let me do a couple of examples here for you. So the first one, you know, this is set equal to zero already. Now, again, I, I know I need to, it tells me to use factoring, first of all. But I know I'm going to do factoring here because I see that I have two different x terms and I cannot combine them because they're not like terms. So I know factoring's involved. First step, set it equal to zero, good. Is there a GCF here? No. So this one has no GCF and I see three terms, which tells me it's a trinomial. And there's no number written in front of x squared. We know there's a 1 there. But that's what tells us it's a basic trinomial. So then I just need to factor this basic trinomial and keep it set equal to 0. What adds to negative 6 and multiplies to negative 16? And the answers are x minus 8 and x plus 2. You know, without doing a whole video on how to factor again, remember the, the order of this doesn't matter. I mean, the 8 has to be negative and the 2 has to be positive. But you could put the x plus 2 first, the x minus 8 second. But these are the only two numbers in the world that multiply to negative 16 and add to negative 6. There are other numbers that multiply to negative 16, but they won't add to negative 6. Then what you do is now I got to set these factors each equal to 0. Some people like to draw a line and, you know, like a little t-chart. Sometimes people call it where I'll say right, x minus 8 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. And you solve each of these little mini equations. Now, how do I get x alone? I'm going to have to add 8 to both sides and x equals 8. Here I'm going to have to subtract 2 on both sides. x equals negative 2. Those are my two answers. And a lot of times you're going to get multiple answers here. Uh, let's do another one. Now x squared minus 25. Now like I was saying before, when you look at multiple x's that you can't combine, you know it's factoring. How do I even know this is factoring? Do I have to do factoring here? Technically the answer is for this particular question you actually don't have to do factoring. Um, you know, what you could, but let me, let me do it with factoring first. I want to show you two different ways to do this one problem here. So first of all, with factoring, what you could recognize here is, no, there aren't multiple x terms, but, and then we'll do without factoring. And this is only possible in this situation. Like this previous example, you had to do it with factoring. There's no other option other than, again, a quadratic formula, but you don't know that yet. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so... With factoring is you could recognize this, that there's no GCF. It's two terms. We got a subtraction. They're square. This is a dot. And if you remember how to factor dots, it's just, you know, x plus 5, x minus 5. We, you know, tend to think about square roots. You know, square root of x, square root of 25. We always get one positive, one negative. They got to multiply to that negative 25. And then you could solve these. And you're going to end up with x, you know, plus 5 equals 0, which will give you x equals negative 5. You get x minus 5 equals 0, which is going to give you x equals positive 5. So you get 5 and negative 5. All right. So how do we do that without factoring? Well, typically what we do when we have equations is we try to get x alone on the left. So couldn't we just, let me just write the problem over again. Couldn't I just add 25 to both sides? Add 25, add 25. You get x squared equals 25, and then we do square root. So I get x equals. But the issue that comes up here is when you square root both sides of something, you're supposed to introduce a plus or minus symbol. And that's actually the case here. What this is saying is the same thing as both of these. It's saying x equals positive 5 and negative 5 at the same time. Because if you remember, you know that 5 squared is 25. Well, a negative 5 squared is also positive 25 because of the whole negative times a negative thing. So if you see a dots-like factoring question, you could do factoring with dots, or you could just you know, add, add the number away and then do square root. But don't forget, you're still going to get two answers. So it does work either way. So either method you like there is fine. When you have an x squared and an x to the first term, like you did in this example and the next two examples, you have no choice Really, you know, you can't just square root things. That's only in a case like this where there's no x to the first term. All right, let me uh, keep doing it going. A couple more examples here. <clears throat> um, so this one, again, I have multiple x terms. I want to get them to the same side. Um, and then I realize I'm not going to be able to combine them, so that tells me it's factoring. And that would be subtract 8x plus 15 equals 0. I notice set it equal to 0 because I can't combine these things together. This is another basic trinomial factoring here. x, x, multiply to 15. You're thinking 5 and 3. 
but they got to add to negative 8, so it's actually negative 5 and negative 3. And then some people pretty quickly start to realize, all right, that's going to end up being x equals 5, x equals 3, because when you set it equal to 0, you're going to add 3, you're going to add 5. All right, and it's okay if you kind of jump to that. Um, these are called factors. These are called solutions. So if you hear those terms, and sometimes solutions are also referred to as roots and zeros. And those are two things that we'll definitely talk a lot about in the very near future. That has to do with more when we look at these things as graphs and stuff like that. But for now, we have factors which turn into solutions. All right, uh, next one here. Can't combine like terms. It's already set equal to zero. The first thing we look for is a GCF. Sometimes people see that x squared and they forget about the GCF. But this does have a GCF of x. And when you take it away, we get x plus 7 equals zero. Set each factor. Again, a little, little t-chart if you want. Now, the GCF of x gets set equal to 0, and then there's nothing to do. You just get x equals 0. That's one of your answers. The x plus 7 equals 0 becomes x equals negative 7. So I get negative 7 and 0. Down here, I decided this video is running a little long, but this is an important topic to spend time on here. Um, it's can't combine these, so I know it's factoring. There's no GCF. This is going to be an AC factoring question. And just a little recap on that, we multiply first times last, that's negative 24x squared. So now i got to figure out a way to split this one up in the middle. Things that multiply to that negative 24 and add to that 5. Remember, if I'm going too fast, pause the video. Well, those numbers, what's it going to be? Multiplies to negative 24, adds to positive 5. I think it's going to be a positive 8 and a negative 3, right? They add to negative 5, multiply to negative 24. Yeah, that's it. So plus... 8x minus 3x minus 12 equals 0. Slice it in half for some grouping. Take out 2x, get x plus 4. Take out a negative 3, get the matching x plus 4. And that's 2x minus 3 and x plus 4 equals 0. You have to be a little careful when you're solving it. Like the x plus 4, I think people can kind of predict that's going to become x equals negative 4. You kind of see like in becomes an equal sign with the opposite sign type relationship. But 2x minus 3, that's not quite so easy. So that one you might want to actually take the time and set it equal to 0 and do it you know, manually. So that's a really ugly 0. Get rid of that. No, let's make it a better 0. So the first step here would be to add 3, add 3. So we get 2x equals 3, then divide 2, divide 2, x equals 3 over 2 and x equal negative 4. So we will occasionally get fractions, and that happens a lot when you see AC factoring involved, you get fractions. All right, lastly <clears throat> is the literal equations like this. AX plus BX equals C minus D. Occasionally, when you see literal equations, factoring is involved. Again, I want to solve for X, but I don't have like terms between AX and BX. Well, when you're doing a literal equation, that you can't combine. Literal with factoring is what this would be called. It's the same situation, but that always involves GCF factoring when you do literal with factoring. And so what we could do here is on the left side, I see both things have an x. When I take x away, I get a plus b equals c minus b. So I'm just factoring this left side. You know, Get all the x terms together on the same side and factor out the x. Now this is x times a plus b, so I can divide by a plus b. Cross out there, so we get x equals c minus d over a plus b. And a lot of students don't like literal equations, but it's still just the same thing. But if you see a literal equation where you're solving for x and you can't combine them, then factoring is likely what you need to do. All right, so factoring is a great way to solve equations. We're going to see a lot of this throughout the year. It combines a lot of the skills we've done throughout this year, so it's a really, really important topic. See ya.